difficult with him in the house? I can't wait until my younger son turns 18. My 17-year-old son, Joe, is transitioning from male and female. We've had a rough time with this. It's like bereavement where you have to grieve for your son and welcome a daughter. My husband does not support Joe's transition. Don't be dressed like that when your dad gets home because he doesn't want to see it. He feels it's a phase. Joe goes by Ariana, but I call him Joe. Joe, how I feel about Joe? We do not use female pronouns regarding Joe in the house. As a kid, Joe did wear t-shirts over his head to pretend it was long hair. Joseph always wanted to play dress up with the girls. Joe came out to me during his freshman year that he's gay. Joseph came out to my husband and I as transgender about a year ago. At first I was angry. I refused to go out in public with Joe because of the way he looked. I was severe and would tell him, take it off. You're a weirdo. Why? You're making it worse. You don't like them? No. Why? Because they're horseshoes. I'm not a whore though. I didn't say you were a whore, I said they were whore shoes. It feels awkward to be seen in public with Joe as of right now. I can just feel people staring, it's almost like a laser. I worry about Joe ending up in the sex trade. I'm physically exhausted, mentally exhausted. I told him in six months and two weeks when you turn 18, I said, I'm not doing this anymore. What are you going to do when you turn 18? When your dad and I say, get out, we're tired of dealing with it. What are you going to do? I'm going to have to let him go. Okay, you're having a tough time with this, right? Yes. Be honest and tell me what's really bothering you. What bugs you about this? The the disrespect. The uh, like I said, my husband and I are both retired military, mm -hmm. and we have a certain way we want to do things, and we constantly argue and and everything with Joe with how what he wears, random right. people coming to the house picking him up, um, okay. finding out from the neighbors. So of course I'm furious, and I expect him to respect those house rules. That's the way we were raised. Okay, but what is it you're furious about? Are you furious as a, about the fact that there is a change in the wind here, that your son is saying that he doesn't feel like a male and wants to transition here uh, to a female? Is that... The, the transgender thing has no, doesn't, doesn't matter. It's the schooling and... Now that and just, uh, come on. Now other people that... that, that That's not true. You, I mean, I've, li I've read your interview top, side, and bottom. That's just not true. That's what you think is socially acceptable to say, but that's not really how you feel. Right. You don't go out, you, won't, you don't no, want to go I out in public go out, with him. No, and when I go out... You're, you're ashamed of it. You're worried about what's going to happen to him. So why do you say that that doesn't... Are you trying to be politically correct? No, to a point, it, it doesn't bother me because of the fact that my family's supportive. Doctors have told you that if you're going to meet him where he is, and I'm using your terms, you're going to meet him where he is.
is that you need to refer to Joe with female pronouns. Correct. And you've said, ain't happening. Not out in public, I won't do it. And at home, I won't do it. But at his medical appointments, I started to try and as, as his mother try and, and do she and her and I have yet to call uh, him Ariana. But you, you think this is a phase? I don't necessarily think it's a phase. My husband does. I think it's something that he truly is going to eventually change his, or, his sexual orientation. You said he changes names like you change underwear. Yeah, see, that's true. He does. Like it's Ari Ariana, Victoria, the, but that's the name is not important. Do you believe that this is something he's doing for attention? Do you think this is some way to escape involvement with school or whatever? Or do you think this is a legitimate feeling issue going on with him? I think it's a legitimate feeling. He's confused and I truly think he'll eventually be a female. What do you think he's going through right now? And I'm saying he because I've not met him yet and heard him tell me what, how he wants to be referred to. I'll let him tell me that. But what do you think he's going through? I've, I've been out with him where I've had to take him to dental appointments and people stare and say, is that a, you know, a male or female? And some days we're okay and other days we're not. We're really, truly at conflict. My husband doesn't want to come home from work, you know, and, and to a point I empathize and sympathize with what he's going through. You flushed his hormones. Yes, I did. Why? We got into an argument and I flushed him because I told him, I said, I'm done with it. I'm done with this. I'm tired of dealing with it. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. You're not going to. You keep making empty promises. I said, so I flushed him. And you were, you were done with it. What do you mean? Done with him saying, well, I'm going to change. I'm going to get my school done. I'm going to get up and be consistent on, on a timeline and, and be like my older brother and my younger sisters when they go to school. Since he does online schooling because the bullying at the public school was so bad. But for somebody to be still trying to attempt their freshman year online and they're going to be 18 and they should be a senior, something needs to change. What does the term gender identification mean to you? Someone who's not sure with, with who they are in their skin. You know, even though he was born male at birth, he feels he's a female psychologically. Well, you use the word confusion, but th th that doesn't necessarily mean confusion. Gender identification is, it's, it's his strong personal sense right. of, of who you are. Okay. And that's different from who you're identified as in the world. And so you're living at, at cross purposes. He doesn't get to say, well, I'm just done with this. He has one gender identity and he's having to live with some other assignment. Right. And that's a lot of conflict. And you say he's stuck in the ninth grade when he should be a senior. Well. He could be really distracted by all of this. As his mother, I feel to a point I failed. Sheila says she hates Joe's high heels, but that's what he's wearing today. We're going to meet this military mom's transgender child when we come back and uh, see what's going on. We'll be right back. Pretty much just like our girl clothes. This is my wig. I think I look pretty good, like with this kind of blonde. Classy, classy. <laughs> Society doesn't accept people that are different, that are trans, and then you're gonna come out a dude dressing like a chick. And later. But you've also told her to go kill yourself and that you wouldn't care. Then whose shoulder does she cry on? I'm cutting. I have hair on my legs. Because you called her ugly. She doesn't feel like she's loved by her own family. On an all new Dr. Phil. My husband is hostile. I want to know everything. You trust me. Impulsive. How many times have you been arrested? We're not talking about that. 42 times. He rants and raves. You chased her around the house with a pair of scissors. It wasn't intentional. It wasn't intentional when you held the scissors to her throat. Because you are delusional. I'm just trying to understand your delusions. Your level of arrogance is staggering. That's tomorrow. 
Joe started taking hormones about four or five weeks ago. My mom and I got into an argument when we were up at my grandparents' house, and she decided that she was just going to flush my hormones, and she did. My mom was telling me that I'm not a girl and that I'll never be a girl. But it started out as joking, and it ended up being to where he felt it turned into bullying. I went and took the, the hormones, and I flushed him because I was angry. That did not go over real well with Joe. I just felt like, oh, great, there goes my transition, and there goes my mom and I's relationship along with my hormones moved down the toilet. Sheila says her son Joe came out as a transgender boy a year ago, and they've been at odds ever since. Ariana says her mom calls her a bitch and is not proud of her at all. I've been transitioning for about almost two years now. I like the name Ariana because it's a lot more feminine. My parents do not call me Ariana, they call me by my birth name. I know you're still my son, I still call you Joe. Ever since I was very little, I always thought that I was a girl. I remember the first time I actually got my nails painted. I was like, oh my gosh, yes. When I told my parents I was transgender, my dad and I got into a really heated argument. He didn't like it at all. My parents have a really hard time trying to support me. You want to transition so bad, you don't want to wait. It was only after I came out that I started going in public in girl clothes and wearing makeup in public. My mom never comes in here while I do my hair or while I get dressed. My mom has said a lot of hurtful things to me. Her and I argue every single day. You should listen what I have to tell you. She does call me a bitch quite a lot. She told me I should go and then she told me she didn't care if I killed myself. My mom has slapped me quite a lot. It's my mom's version of spanking. My dad is not coming on the show because I don't think he wants to be involved with any of it and I just push it aside so he doesn't have to stress out about it. I think both my parents are bothered by my transition and try to cover it up with just focus on your school, not focus on your transition. You haven't passed high school yet. You should be a senior. You're not. I don't think my parents are proud of me. I don't think they think I've accomplished anything. Both my parents say that when I turn 18, I'm no longer allowed to live here. Okay, uh, Ariana, come on out. You've been listening to what we've been talking about so far, right? Yes. Okay. And um, you've got, you, you've got to give your mom a lot of credit. I do. For being here. Because yeah. she's seriously looking for answers, right? Yes. You're really trying. I truly am. I feel like I'm coming out here is I'm saving his life. Yeah. That's how I look at it. You came out to your parents as gay some time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, when? Um, I told them I was gay in eighth grade, but I knew when I was very little that I wanted to be a girl. I just didn't want to hurt them by saying I wanted to be a girl. Okay. And those aren't the same thing. Yeah. I mean, uh, You're right. are, are, you, are you gay? No. I just didn't want to be like, oh, I want to be a girl. I kind of just did it kind of in stages. Okay. Because of your external genitalia, you're assigned as male, but that's not what you feel like inside. And you never have, mm -mm. right? Even as early as four or five? When I was little, I just thought I was a girl. And then as I got older into third, fourth grade, I started seeing the difference in gender. It was just weird, because as I got older, it was like, well, why can't I use the girls' bathroom? I was like, oh, I have boy parts. I can't do that. And I got into sixth grade, and I found out what transgender meant. And it pretty much just described me completely. Your mother has had a myriad of reactions to this. You've told him to go s Right. Uh, you've called him the s Yeah. You've called him a bitch. Yeah. What's your goal or objective in saying those things to her? There is no goal or objective. It's just plain mean. And I, I, I've apologized to, to him for that, and, I, and, I, and I'm ashamed of those things. But, uh, and I understand that, but you don't do that for no reason. What, what is your motivation behind doing that? Anger. That's all it is. So you're just venting. There, yeah, it's a form of venting, exactly. And I've come back and apologized to her. Him. But what are you venting for? I'm frustrated what? because he's not where he should be. You know, I'm frustrated because the current treatment that we have him in is not working. Ariana said 
you got the vagina and he got the penis and that was backwards. Yes. As a, as a, as a joke, yeah. Yeah. I mean, as a joke, yeah. Yeah. We do, we do have... And you took it as a joke. You said, yeah, but don't tell your dad. <laughs> I do, and we do, and we do, we do have moments where we joke because we are one and the same. And it's just the only thing that's different about us is masculinity and femininity. That's it. Otherwise, personality and heart-wise, we're the complete same. Do you think you're more on the masculine end of the scale for I, for women, and he's more on the feminine scale I, yes, for men? Yes, I yes I agree. But that's I mean that's neither here nor there. I just want him to be. No, it is here nor there. But you you wouldn't consider yourself a girly girl. No, no. That's not you. No. You're comfortable being who you are. Correct. And th there's nothing wrong with that, but you do have a problem with Ariana being comfortable with who she is. And I hate that I, and I truly hate that I have a problem with that. There was like a time period in eighth grade. I didn't have any friends. I didn't have anybody. I had my mom. And that was it. Mm -hmm. And I came out, and our relationship got ruined. So you lost the one friend you had. Yeah. Well, you're going to be very surprised that I agree with a lot of the problems you do have with this. Some of the problems you have, I think, are legitimate. I think they're valid, and I agree with them. Some of them I don't. Now, coming up, we're going to find out why Ariana's best friend says Sheila may pretend to be a good mom, but she says she knows better. We'll be right back. One time, Ariana called me crying, said that her mom told her to go kill herself, and she started cutting. My heart hurts for her. I don't like that she gets bullied by her own family. I feel him kick. I can feel the little feet. My daughter thinks she's pregnant, and she's not. She actually thinks her baby's Jesus. I am pregnant! And it is Jesus. Do you believe this baby is the son of God? Yes. The ultrasound was performed on Haley. You say, I'm giving birth. You don't believe that. You are not a lie detector test, and you need to shut it. Before I met him, my ex-husband, who was a priest, he had an affair with a massage therapist. Who's now his wife? This is the wonderful marriage that I apparently split oh. up, right? She needs to leave the room. Your son killed himself with a shotgun. Peter died under her roof. She doesn't appear to have any recognition of what she's done. Do you believe that she would want y'all son to be dead? Yes. You sorry son of a bitch! Hey, let me finish. You are finished! My stepdad was a sick pervert. He would have me touch him in the tub. And your grandmother knew this. She was fluffing her hair ten feet away. I never saw it. You know what you did. I did not molest you. You are willing to destroy my life. You have destroyed mine. Let's see what happens during a typical day when Ariana and her friend go to the mall. Take a look. The first thing I do when I get up is put on my makeup. For some whatever reason, I'm really, really, really feminine and girly. I like to wear makeup. I don't know any guys' friends because a lot of guys don't understand exactly what transgender is. I can't even go in public without someone telling me to kill myself. And a lot of people don't know that I'm trans until, you know, like, they hear me talk sometimes because my voice is not feminine. But that's so really <laughs> This is my best friend, Jodeci. Ooh, did you hear how deep my voice just got? Oh, my gosh. I got mascara on my face. I'm upset now. I gotta pick my outfit up. My clothes that I have are very designy, I guess. I wear things that pretty much just like our girl clothes. I have dresses and blouses, heels, boots, and all that. Yes. This is my wig. I think I look pretty good, like with this kind of blonde. Okay, well, you put it on there and then. Hold down on the back. Sassy, classy. <laughs> I like to move out when I turn 18 and have my own place. I feel sexy. <laughs> when I first walked out of my room and my parents saw me in girl clothes, it was scary. It was petrified of what they were gonna say. I haven't been able to get a job. I do have to try to get money from my mom. We're gonna be going to the mall. So can I get $20? Are you kidding me? 
<laughs> what? You want money? Yeah. And you're gonna wear those? What? What do you mean, what? Society doesn't accept people with that are different, that are trans. They have problems with skin color, and then you're gonna come out a dude dressing like a chick. I'm not a dude dressing like a chick. Well, other people in society look at you that way. You're making it seem like I know I'm just the one doing everything wrong. You're the one who has to get it, not me. Bye. On my usual day, Jodeci and I will go to the mall. Or remember that one time we went to the mall and those people were calling me a Nobody deserves to be treated like that. To go out in public and have weird looks all the time because you're different. When I go to the mall, I walk around. I always get clothing here. My shoes are killing me already. It's like the prettier the shoe is, the more it hurts. It's not easy to be transgender. People say it's a choice. Why would anyone want to go through any of this? Okay, Josie, thanks for being here. Thank you for um, inviting me. What do, you, what do you think and feel as you sit here right now and, and, I, and look at the presentation before you? I don't, I don't have a problem with it, to a point. I have, I have, I'm, I'm open to it. I mean, I've, I served 20 years in the military for people to be able to do and express what they want. And I support that. Uh -huh. but, um, and he deserves to be happy. He deserves to have a good education, not be bullied. But you do refer using he. I do. I, I, I go back and forth. I do. I go back and forth. I say he, I say she, that sort of thing. So, I mean, I'm trying. I'm really, truly, deep down trying to be a better person, a better mom. And I have gay and, friends and, and stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying he's, you know, it's, it's a bad thing. But the doctors that, when, well, you were getting some education, were getting some input, said, you can help here to reduce some of the conflict, at least at home, by using the female pronouns. And you said, absolutely not. Not sort of no, absolutely not. And you're entitled to your thoughts and opinions. Like you right. said, you fought for people to have their right to their opinions. Right. And what is your objection to that? What? I, it, it's, it's like I said, it, it's a complicated with my husband who feels it is a phase. I didn't ask you why he doesn't. I asked you why I, you don't. I don't. Is it to make peace with him? It is to keep the peace with him. So you're just, you're selling out to, to a point, him. Yeah, to a point. Yeah, I am. I Even am. though you know unfair. it's not. I, I don't want to continue to make things any worse than what they already are and still mm -hmm. support my, you know, my child and then still be with the man that I said I do to for 27 years. So it's, I'm in a complicated corner. I help you a lot. How many times has dad had to tell you to quit being rude to me about exactly. going to school? Your you father make me tells me a lot to quit being rude to you. But you've also told, told her to go kill yourself. The constant conflict, a lot of it comes from you. Yeah, it I does. mean, and uh, these are some of the statements that you have made about Ariana. One, I flushed his hormone pills. I said, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm flushing these. Quote, when Joe started with the makeup, it made me uncomfortable. It made my husband uncomfortable. Then it made Joe feel uncomfortable that we felt uncomfortable. I would tell him, go take that off. The doctors told me to refer to Joe with female pronouns. I said, absolutely not. He's not a stupid kid. There's just a lot on his plate. I know the constant arguing probably squashes any confidence he has academically. I said, Joe, don't get this the wrong way, but you're too dumb. Your test scores are between idiot and dumbass. Joe tells us he's cutting because of bullying. I told him this would happen. I told him people are not accepting. I said this is another I told you so moment. I told him he should have listened. It's hard to go out in public with Joe. You see a girl dressed up with an Adam's apple. I try to keep public appearances with him down. I'm thinking we're going to have our 40-year-old transgender son living with us. Great. I don't want him to end up outside having to perform sex acts, I'm editing this, uh, for a living. Right. Because he's um, brought to our attention that other friends that are transgender, that he was 
going to high school with, saying that that's what they do. That's how they do it. And I'm thinking, well, okay. So that's where that statement came from. I said that because I don't want to have to get to a point where I consider doing something like that. I want to fix the relationship that we had because there is a bunch of trans girls that do have to go to the last resort, which is selling themselves for sex, mm -hmm. doing stuff that objects their own body so that they can make some money because they don't have anybody to support them. You say that you want to help Ariana with the school, but you're like... You're calling her stupid. If she wants you to excel in life, then why isn't she helping you with your school? She should be by your side and helping you with your school and, not, and stop saying that you're going to fail in life. But if you need the help, then she needs to help you with that. But see, there's been help. I have helped him. I've helped him do his schooling online. I'm the one who was in the school with the psychologist and intervention. I have no idea where you were at that point because you weren't there. And you can chime in at any time because you know this is true. You, you can chime me. in at any time. Okay, but you do help me. But I help you a lot. How many times has Dad had to tell you to quit getting being rude to me about exactly. doing school? Your you father me tells me a lot to quit being rude to you. Okay, but you are also to. rude back. You are also I'm, rude back. I'm supposed Who's, to just sit there and let you be mean. You've to me? told me <laughs> numerous times. But you've also told, told her to go kill yourself and that you wouldn't care if she would go. I kill told herself. her I will not be responsible if she does because she comes in and whose shoulder does she cry on? I have a penis. No, I didn't have anybody. I else. have. I'm cutting. I have hair on my she's legs. Cutting because you called her ugly and that you said that she was never going to be a girl. That's why she's cutting because she doesn't feel like she's loved by her own family. No, she's That's, loved. And she knows she's I've loved. I've never heard you ever once say that I love you to her. I, you, I tell you all the time that I'm, we're proud of you and that I love I've you. You know, you know, you know, you know that. And you haven't been in the picture all that long, Jodeci. Yeah, but I mean, you, the, there's no I but. Have you have here, not been in the picture. But you since don't I have know. Been in here. You don't I have know. Felt no love. There's no One, family a week in and the a picture. Half. A week and a half. She doesn't even feel loved in her own home. She's scared that whenever she comes home or whenever you come home, that she's gonna get yelled at. What provokes you to slap Just the her? anger. I slapped her when. Because it's legal and she can. That's not true. I don't yell at you and say hurtful things every single time. On an all new Dr. Phil. My husband is hostile. You chased her around the house with a pair of scissors. It wasn't intentional. It wasn't intentional when you held the scissors to her throat. That's tomorrow. What provokes you to slap her in the face? I, I slapped her when. Because it's legal, is what she says. <laughs> because what? Because it's legal and she can. That's not true. Okay. What provokes you to slap Just the her anger. Face? The anger that I have. And you're angry at what? Just from all the, all, just everything we're going through with this and, and the school and the disrespect and the, you know, we, we're doing everything we can and he doesn't do his part. But the anger that she has, it's not like she takes it out on you either. It's like she keeps everything to herself. All the anger herself. that I have, I took out on my own by self. That's she why I was really cutting. Did. I didn't ever come to you or dad and scream at you. I mean, sometimes when we argue, you know, I'll say something back. But all I did was take it out on myself and because I hate myself. And she would call me crying and I couldn't All the time it. when you guys yell at me or say that you don't like the trans, I take that out on myself. I don't yell at you and say hurtful things every single time. That's not true either. She's struggling, like, everywhere. It's not just... At home, it's outside. She's always worried about something. She's always feeling threatened. If I have to be respectful, why is it okay for you not to be respectful towards me? Well, look. Look, two, two wrongs don't make a right here, and I come back with the same question. When you slap in the face, what's your goal? Uh, another <clears throat> form of, I guess, venting. So the calling names is venting. Right? Right. Slapping in the face is venting. So all of that's about you. Right. Exactly. You know that when you demean someone and you say you're stupid, you're a dumbass, you're this, you're that, you know that erodes self-esteem, right? Exactly. You're more interested in venting than you are about school performance. Well, based on results, 
based on results, you, you, you got a choice. So, okay, I've got some choices in front of me here. I can either do something that would enhance school performance or I can vent. I think I'll vent. All right, I can do something here that would give her a soft place to fall or I can vent. I think I'll vent. It seems like she's coming out on the short end of the stick damn near every time. I don't agree with that. Well, in each example that I'm giving you, that's true. Now, I'm going to give you the flip side of that in a minute, but in each of the examples I'm giving you, you have to agree that's true. You say, well, you're cherry picking some things and making a case, and if you look at only that, then you'd have to be right. But, Dr. Phil, you're missing the fact that there's a lot of things I do to support as well. Because it takes a thousand out of girls to erase one, you're a dumbass. And you know that. And look, I, I, I deal with reality here. And I think this situation can get a good deal better in a short period of time with some manageable changes. And I'm going to tell both of you what I think needs to happen here in a second. We've got to take a break. Coming up, another teen who came out to her parents in the sixth grade. Uh, we're going to find out uh, how her mom responded when she heard the news after the break. We'll add them to the conversation. We'll be right back. going to be in the Los Angeles area and you want to watch a live studio taping of the Dr. Phil show, go to drphil.com for free tickets or call 323-461-PHIL. Now, Britt and Lily, another mother and transgender child, are here. Lily was featured in a recent docuseries called This Is Me. Lily first came out to her parents at age 12 as transgender boy. Take a look. When did you get a feeling that you were different? When I was younger, I would kind of go towards feminine things, such as I remember being at preschool and instead of picking, you know, a boy's toy, I'd pick a girl's toy Me to too. play with. Me too. I basically just said, you know, mom, we need to talk to you. And, um, so you told mom first? I told mom first, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, you know, I feel like a girl inside. And I feel like dressing like a girl. And so that was a huge relief to have supportive parents. You've been, you've been listening to the show so far. And you two have been through the transition and the transitioning. And this is a process. What was your reaction when this began? When Lily came to me and um, told me how she was feeling, you know, she was trembling, she was crying. I knew whatever she was going to tell me was going to be something very serious. And when she told me that she identified as female, um, I knew immediately that this was something very serious. And I knew that my reaction to it was very important for my child to see that I was going to help my child, um, that I was going to be there, and that we were going to work through this, and I didn't know anything about it. Were you scared? Absolutely. I was scared because I, I didn't know what it meant. What was your experience of that? Well, I think she handled it very well. I mean, I could see it was very apparent that she was going to be supportive and that she was going to be on my side, and, and the same thing with my dad. You know, uh, when I first started searching out transgender people, one thing I heard of was lack of acceptance, lack of support. And so going up to tell my parents, you know, I was really nervous. I was thinking maybe I could get kicked out of the house. You know, maybe they might not support me. And uh, to, to just get a hug from my mom right after I told her and holding her while we both kind of cried together was, it was a great moment because I think something that I thought would tear us apart brought us even closer together because I knew she was there for me and that she was going to support me. Mm -hmm. And um, how did you, how did you know? 
Well, I think it's interesting. A lot of times people ask transgender people, you know, how did you know? And I, I feel that you know the same as, you know, you know you're a guy and the same as anyone else knows their gender. It just kind of comes to you. It's just this inner sense that's always really been there. The only thing that's different is we have so many people doubting it that, you know, that's sometimes why it takes us some time to find the terminology, to find the, the way to tell people. And you say Lily did poorly in school at first. Um, unfortunately, seventh grade, um, kind of figuring everything out and making a game plan on how to do the social change. Um, she did extremely poor in school that seventh grade year. Okay, why, why did you do poorly? What was going on inside? Was it emotional distraction? Were you head racing? Were you, what, what was going on? Well, it's hard to, to, to focus on something when your basic needs haven't been met. When you're so worried about how things are going to turn out and how you're going to tell your parents and how school's going to react, it's kind of hard to focus on geometry. You were listening, Lily, back there to everything that's going on here with this mother and, and daughter. What, what, what do you think? What was your reaction to what Ariana's experiencing right now? I think she needs support. I think she needs a mom who, who's going to use the right pronouns. I think she needs to hear that people support her. And I want to tell you, I support you. Okay. I support you entirely. And, and I'm sorry it's been so long we've had to hear that. Um, you know, I think that, that we need, as a family, they need to transition together as a family. You know, they need to all learn about what it means to be trans. And in order for them to all move on, they're all going to have to, you know, educate themselves and find out, you know, how are, how are they going to make it work? What, what would you say to mom here? I think one of the best gifts you could give to yourself is to let go of what every other person in your community thinks, what you're, you're worried about, perhaps how you're being perceived because you think that this is a reflection upon you. Ariana is her own individual. And I think when you can let go of the worry, let go of being judged, um, you'll find that it's a gift. All right, well, when we come back, uh... Ariana wanted to know if I can help her fix her relationship with her mom, Sheila. Uh, I'm going to tell her what I think about that when we come back. And I said earlier there were some problems that uh, Sheila is having with all of this that I think she's right about and that I agree with. I'm going to tell you what I think those things are when we come back. Coming up on Dr. Phil, visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, live strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. Well, I'm back with Sheila, Ariana, and Lily and Britt. Also joining us in the audience is Darlene Tando. She is a licensed clinical social worker who specializes in treating families with transgender children. And I said treating families, not the children, the families. She's also the author of The Conscious Parent's Guide to Gender Identity, a mindful approach to embracing your child's authentic self. And uh, Darlene, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. What, um, uh, if you were going to give a piece of advice to families that were just entering this process. Where would you tell them to begin and, and what to think about? Well, I'd echo what you said, you know, doing a lot of research and educating yourself. There are a lot of books on the topic um, about gender affirming standpoints is really important. Um, connecting with other parents can be hugely beneficial for parents who are struggling because most parents you meet have been there at some point in the journey, usually right in the very beginning. Um, so that can be very affirming for you and supportive. I, I think sometimes when a change is presented in a dramatic way, we start looking at that one thing to the exclusion of everything that defines this wonderful child that you've loved all of these years. Right. I said there were some things that I agree with from you is just because you're transitioning, that doesn't give you a pass on the rest of life. You still have, you still have responsibilities to be a constructive and productive member of this family. 
you need to get your education under control and in focus. Um, I, I realize that there might be a lot of distraction and stuff going on, but you need to require of yourself to be putting one foot in front of the other and making progress in life. Because whether you fully transition uh, to female or whether you don't, you're still going to have to pull your weight in this world. And, and your parent's job, any parent's job, is to prepare the child for the next level of life. Mm -hmm. And you are right to be concerned that the world can be harsh with your child. Right. And the best thing in the world you can do to help with that is to support and give such great ego strength, such great aff affirmation that her self-worth and self-esteem steals her against those idiots. Right. Okay. okay. I'm glad at recommended support group for Ariana. It's Kaleidoscope Youth Center, solely dedicated to supporting lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning youth and their loved ones. Uh, the organization offers a support group called Genderscope, specifically for transgender youth. And I really hope that you will do that and um, continue to seek and get the support that you need. So I want to thank all of my guests for being here today. If you or someone you know is dealing with a struggling family member, log on to DrPhil.com. Tell me about it. I want to thank you for being here. We'll see you next time.